In this video, we're going to continue to look at multi-body modeling by looking at some modification techniques. So here I have our box that we're continuing to build, and I like to do some modifications to it that affect multiple solids. What's nice about this is a change made to the feature that affects multiple solids will therefore end up affecting additional parts once this gets broken out into an assembly. Here I have sketch number four inside of multi-body modification one from our working files directory. And essentially, this is going to be a little groove piece that creates a notch for a divider to go into this box. So it's already been sketched in here. I'll go ahead and start my extrusion command. I'll select my profile and choose the cut operation to cut material away. Currently, this is only cutting material away from the highlighted solid. I would also like to cut the material away from the solids on the back side as well as the front face plate as well. So I'll go here to my solids button in my dialog box and I'll choose the front solid, the back solid, and this top piece here to the lid mechanism. For the depth, I'll have it go down to a selected face. And here I'll pick the bottom face of that. So there we can see the groove preview being generated. And here it's going to cut through four separate parts. Now, if we consider how we would do this in a traditional sense to multiple parts that exist in assemblies, we would have to do this to four separate different parts to make this happen to actually show up inside the part files. So this is still quite nice going to our eventual usage of this multi-body part to be broken out into an assembly. I'll approve this with my green check mark. And there's the groove. Both sides going through four different parts. Next up, we'll create a fillet on the back end of this solid and this solid so the lid can open properly. Begin my fillet command. Make sure I choose the back edge to this piece. You might have to use your selection filter to get the correct edge. There's that one and that one. My radius for this will be 20. I'm going to make that equal to my parameter I have in here called lid support square dimension and approve that. Now, if these two solid bodies are looking identical to each other, so you might be thinking, well, shouldn't those just be one solid body and I place a multiple quantity of that into my design? Well, you're on the right track, but these will eventually have different changes to them. For instance, maybe I'll put a chamfer on this edge and a chamfer on the other side on a different edge. So they actually would be two separate parts because they have different design criteria to them. Next up, we're going to add a hole. So for this, I'm going to sketch on the interior face of that solid body. I'll simply use my slice graphics here in my geometry projection. I'll add a circle in here. And we'll give that a dimension of five millimeters. I'll start my extrusion. That profile has already been selected, and this will be a cut that goes between two faces or planes, between this one and this one. Now notice the cut is still only participating in the highlighted color magenta solid. So I'll make sure that I select the additional solids on both sides. There I can see the hole going through all three solids. I'll approve that. Now I have my hole going back through here for a pin to be placed in later. So there are other things you can do here as well for simple modification techniques. So I did a fillet. I did a circular extrusion that will basically remove some material for that pin location. I did that groove as well as another cut there. Well, what about the hole command? Well, I could use the hole command, but you have a little bit of an issue if you use the hole command. So if I go up here and start the tool, you're going to notice that it has the ability to select which solids it would like to participate in. The downside to this is when I end up turning this into separate part files, any hole information that I give it, such as a threaded information or counterbore information, it essentially loses that. So I can't modify that in the new file that gets created to represent that new IPT portion of the design. So you have to be very careful when you do connection methods here. It's okay to do simple holes. It's okay to do even perhaps a counterboard because that still does kind of pick up inside the drawing environment. But anything you give clearance or threading information to 
just be aware that it may not pick up on that overriding intelligence that you had when you created the command. So the whole command is a little finicky there. That information doesn't carry through fully to the new parts as they get created downstream. So I'm going to cancel that. And you'll also notice that the command is also available for chamfer. You can choose additional edges here. Put those on. So I had the same chamfer value taking place on two little corners here. That way, when I go back to this file and I update the chamfer value, I don't have to do it for multiple files. I just do it for this one. And I'll keep that at three millimeters for both of those. So you can see those two end pieces on the top are definitely different pieces and you couldn't reuse them in a traditional sense.